we can use no. <laughs> We can solve exponential equations using our logarithms. However, before we do this, there are a few rules that we should establish for when we are solving exponential equations. The first one being that we should check whether um, equal bases can be established so that exponents can be equated. So, of course, if we've got if we can make both sides, you know, um, bases of two or three or four so that we can just make their two exponents equal to one another and then solve for x y or z from there the next one is well if we can't create equal bases the next thing we can do is actually take the log of both sides so taking the same log base of both sides that maybe we can cancel one side out um, and solve for the x y or z and then finally, we might even, if that's not working, we could potentially look for factorization patterns. So, for example, if um, one side had like a four base and the other had a six base, then maybe you want to factorize so that you really want to try and get bases of two on either side. So you get two squared equal to two times by three, and then you've kind of got some same bases going there. But of course, in the example questions, there will probably be better examples of this. When we are solving our exponential equations using logs, we need to remember this main rule here, which is if we've got a log base of a, and it has um, a to the x, then this is just going to be equal to x. Of course, this log base a here and this a are going to cancel each other out. So if we have a look at our example here, we want to solve to the power of x equal to 14. Now, in this case here, I can't, well, I could maybe um, use some factorization patterns. I definitely can't get 14 to a base 2 power. Um, so what I am going to do is just take the log of 2 of both sides of this equation to solve for x. So usually I'm going to try and look for a log base that is the same as the base that is attached to my x or whatever it is that I am looking to find. So taking log base 2 from both sides, I can now see that I can cancel out this um, log 2 and 2. So I'm left with x equal to log base 2 of 14. Um, this is the most simplest form of this equation and of course I could if I wanted to put this into a calculator um, to get me a decimal answer but that is as far as you need to go. But um, we don't actually have to use log base 2, we could use any if we wanted to. So maybe for example instead of doing log base 2, um, I in this case use log base 10 on both sides of my equation. So taking log base 10 of both sides, I'm using my um, index law, I think it's number six, you will have them in front of you though, so you probably know a little bit more than me, um, where I can take this x here and I can bring it out the front as done so here. Now I can try to get x by itself by dividing both sides by log base 10 of two, which forms um, this answer here. So as you can see, however, this first method is a little more simpler. So what you're going to be doing next is having a go at a few of these examples and see how you go following these different um, rules and steps to look for first. So as we've determined, we could be using our logs to actually be solving for our equations here. So for this first one, I'm going to use a log base of 5 and raise this to 5 of um, 3x take 5 equal to log base 5 of 37. I probably wrote that 5 a little bit high there. Um, now we know that this part here cancels out so then this is going to give us that 3x take 5 is equal to log base 5 of 37. We can now solve this as normal as log 5 of 37 is just a number. So we're going to have 3x is equal to log 5 of 37 plus 5. And dividing both sides by 3 gives me that x is equal to log base 5 of 37 plus 5 divided by 3. Now moving on to our next example here. Again, I want to try and get this 3 to the power of x 
um, by itself. So we may not actually need a log for this one depending on how it goes. The other thing we might want to consider is looking at um, potentially some of the relationships here down the track with all of these numbers. But for now, let's divide um, both sides by 5. So this will give me that 3 to the power of x is equal to 15 over 5 root 27. And of course, we can see here that 5 divided by 15 is 3. So I'm going to have that 3 to the power of x is equal to 3 on top of square root of 27. Now, you should know by now um, or start being familiar with some of our different powers. So this 27 here actually can be rewritten as 3 to the power of 3 here. So I'm going to do just that. So I might remove this here. And coming up here, I'll have that 3 to the power of x is equal to 3 on top of root 3 of 3. Now remembering that we can rewrite this square root 3 of 3 as 3 to the power of um, 2 thirds and that is from our index laws. So going back over here this is 3 on top of 3 on 2 thirds. Typically know that this is 3 to the power of 1. And again, we can use our index laws and we can have that, of course, this will be um, 3 to the power of x is equal to 3 on 1 take 2 thirds. And this should actually, oops, I've said 2 thirds, my bad. I've actually done it the wrong way around and I'm sure you're thinking, oh my gosh, Miss K, you've done it the wrong way around. Yes, I did. Um, this should be 3 on 2 and... This should also be 3 on 2, so this should take away 3 halves. Sorry about that. And this should become um, 3 over x is actually equal to 3 over minus a half. And we've actually got the same basis here. So remember, we can actually equate our powers. So coming back up here, I can say that my x is actually just equal to um, minus a half. There you go, there's a solution for that question here. Okay, um, these two here are related to each other. Uh, this would actually be D, A, B, C, D, my bad. And what we're going to do is the same thing. We are going to solve this using the same steps as we've been doing before. So just trying to get this to the power of X by itself. So if I've got minus 3 um, times by 2 to the power of x is equal to uh, 5 take away 6, which is going to give me minus 1. Multiplying both sides by 2 thirds gives me 2 to the power of x is equal to 1 third. And now raising both of these to my uh, log base 2, or sorry, putting a log 2 to both sides. So log base 2 of 2x is equal to log base 2 of 1 third. And of course, these two cancel out. And this tells me that x is equal to log base 2 of 1 third. Done. Now what it wants me to do is it's asking us to actually be graphing this equation here. So two main things we need are the asymptotes. And as um, well as the intercepts. So, remembering before that we've learnt that if we've got ourselves um, k times by, I think it was a to the x take away c plus b, and that should be a y equal to. So, this is our equation here that we've learned about before. And remembering for my asymptote, 
it's actually y equal to b. So for my particular question here, I can see that my asymptote should be at y equal to 6. The other thing I want to do is actually solve for my intercepts. Of course, I could either graph this using technology and solve for my x and y intercepts, or I can do this by hand. So I'm just going to come over um, to the side a little bit so we can do some working out over here. And remembering that I know that we get a y-intercept when my x is equal to 0. So having x equal to 0 in this equation gives us that y is equal to minus 3 times by 2 to the power of 0 plus 6. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So this gives me that minus 3 plus 6. And this is just actually equal to 3. So I've got a y-intercept at the point 0, 3. And I'll also have an x-intercept when my y is equal to 0. So when y is equal to 0, I'm going to have that 0 is equal to minus 3 times by 2 to the x plus 6. So it's kind of the same as what we did up here, except instead of it being equal to 5, we've got it equal to 0 instead. So this is going to be minus 6 is equal to minus 3 times by 2 to the power of x. Dividing both sides by minus 3 is going to give me that 2 is equal to 2 to the power of x. And actually we know that um, these, both of these are technically to the power of 1 here, right? And we've got the same base, so we can actually say that equating both of these together, my x is actually just equal to 1, which is really nice. So this tells us that we've also got an x-intercept at 1, 0. So now that we've got these pieces of information, we can actually come back over to our um, table here and put all of this in. So, of course, we are going to make sure that we have our graph. So I'm just going to put that here. Come. Oh, my gosh, this is not a very good straight line at all. I think they're getting worse. <laughs> And we're going to have our other straight line going across. Please do this with a ruler. Remembering to label our axes Y and X. But of course, if you've got an application question, then you will label it with the um, labels that it has for that question. Now, I'm going to put my 6 up here. Because, um, of course, this is my asymptotes. Remember that my graph should not actually or it shouldn't cross this line so my exponential should not cross this line here so that's my asymptote the other thing we should notice is this minus three here so remember instead of having a uh, an exponential that's shaped like this we're going to have an exponential that shapes like this because of that negative here okay so please be sure to remember that the other thing that I can put onto my graph is my y-intercept. So that's at this point here of uh, 0, 3. And my x-intercept is down here. So that's at the point 1, 0. Yours is, of course, going to be drawn to scale. And if I now do my asymptotes, remembering that it's making sure it's really obvious that there is an asymptote here. And then making sure it curves a lot better than mine <laughs> as an exponential. So clearly show that this is an exponential. No doing any straight lines here, okay? It needs to be very obvious that you're drawing an exponential um, graph. So there you have it. We have finished off our examples for um, 2.10.